I haven't done any videos recently on my polycultures and guilds series, so I thought I would do one today around what I would call the Grandma Cherry Guild. You can see the keystone here is this very old cherry, and this is a relatively complex and pretty rich setup that surrounds this tree, and I want to get into why I'm designing around the tree and what the actual design is. So looking at it from this angle, we are currently to the west of this, so I'm looking east, that way is south. You can see where the sun's coming in, late November here. And this cherry is the southernmost element in this guild. And you might say, well wait, why would you design a whole setup of plants around a tree to the north of it when it's going to be all shade? Well, the interesting part of this is that when we first came to this property in 2008, this cherry was in okay shape, but not great shape. And every year it's just gotten weaker and weaker. You can see the bark is peeling pretty heavily at the base. The woodpeckers are taking more and more of an interest in it. So there are bugs in there. And then the real fatal blow is this blown out rot in the middle. And so then another question might be, well, wait a minute, why would you not just cut the cherry tree down and design a new system, put in a young cherry or something else, whatever. Well, there's something to be said for, first of all, the beauty of this tree. It's one of the larger trees in the yard, and it still makes some cherries. Each year it's dying more and more, but it's still holding on, still trying to do its thing. And there's something to be said for acknowledging the value of the elder, right? So this is a tree that's been here for quite a while, and it almost certainly is going to pass away. It, it, it's really in its death throes at this moment. And so I know that at some point there will be more sun here. And so we just started planting and planting things around it to provision for that inevitable future, but to not really push it. So, for example, here's an American persimmon. This is about 10 feet to the west of this cherry, and certainly under the canopy of the cherry. But persimmon is pretty good at being an understory tree and when that cherry finally passes away, it'll really come into its own, into the canopy. Under the persimmon has been planted lemon balm, which protects the persimmon from girdling and all that. But then there's also ground nuts. You can see the vines have died back. But all throughout are nitrogen-fixing uh, perennial and native tubers that can climb the persimmon and feed it nitrogen. Under the cherry, where currently it's very, very shady, we've planted really beautiful hostas. They don't look great right now, but in the summer they're absolutely exquisite. And they love being under the shade of the cherry for now. And what I can see here is a walnut popped in. And so we're leaving the walnut so that when the cherry passes away, we've got another canopy tree to replace it right there. To the south of the cherry, which is still quite shady, are titania black currants and they like shade but they also crop heavier in the sun so when this tree finally passes away they'll get a canopy release and be more productive just to the north of them are jerusalem artichokes which are really enjoying the rotting roots of the cherry and providing some beautiful elements there as well as some pretty easy to access food so already a pretty complex set of beings that are very compatible with this old, old great-grandma hanging out and enjoying her golden years. So that's the persimmon, and then it gets, <laughs> gets kind of crazy on the edge of this, the western edge, so where there's room to expand out, there is a Siberian peach, which does prefer full sun, but it's doing just fine here. And you can see the groundnut is climbing through that, using it as a trellis. There's a Carpathian walnut, which again, you can see is starting to lean westbound where the glade opens for it. Just to the north of that is a relatively small-ish Siberian apricot. This is called Brianna. We've got thornless blackberries that are using this northern hardy pecan tree as a trellis for themselves. I'm really hoping the pecan will be able to make a crop without really good uh, partner pollination. This is the biggest one we have and it feels like Next year it may want to flower, and I'm just hoping that the other ones will pollinate it. 
But again, this is far enough from the cherry that it's able to eke out a really good life for itself with the sun that's available, and it'll only get better once the cherry passes away. What's interesting is when I planted the northern pecan, later that year I noticed leaves of a very similar type of tree on a baby seedling, which is this friend, which now about eight years later is turning into a beautiful hickory. I mean, absolutely exquisite form. And this tree will also be able to replace the canopy of the cherry. You can see there are grape vines climbing up it. These are cultivar grapes, a variety called Concord, and they've been hacked back a bit. But the hickory is so strong that it's really able to be a strong trellis to allow grapes, as long as they're managed to some extent. We even have a little compost pile back in here, which is adding fertility to this whole system and is close enough to the house that it's easy for my older folks to get to. On the eastern side, my mom wanted hemlocks, so we put in two hemlock trees. They're starting to get their feet in the ground. And when my wife and I were married last year, one of our friends brought us an ornamental dogwood, which is a shade tolerant being, and that is nestled in in the shady shadiness of the cherry with the maple to the east of it, which provides a really deep shade actually. But the dogwood flowered nicely this year and has been growing well. So here's this pretty rich setup that's all driven by gently waiting for this old cherry to pass away at the, at the pace that it decides it wants to pass away. And once it finally dies, our intention is not to cut it down, but rather let it be incredible habitat for however long it's willing to stand as a dead standing snag. You can see already there's a lot happening in that tree beyond just itself. So just a different view here of the idea of acknowledging the old and the existing and designing around them and giving some space for things to pass away. Uh, as they feel they need to. So pretty rich guild, very functional, and we're quite happy with it. Thanks for watching.